what happened in the British Grand Prix weekend. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to XRS Plus, the official podcast for X Racing Series. My name is Avi Tyrrell, and we are back. Hey, I've got myself a little intro. What do we think? What do we think? What do we think? Um, yes, welcome back, everyone, uh, to the podcast. We are back again. Round two is complete. Another insane uh, weekend. First sprint of the season as well to uh, match uh, the little setting we've got, the fitting the sprint season idea we've got going on right now. Uh, unreal very very exciting uh, weekend that we had and I cannot wait to discuss it with everyone and their thoughts before I do so before we do get into my thoughts give me a second to have a little peek at the YouTube right now this is obviously kind of my thing this is what I'm running I mean obviously we have uh, Mr. Fetch working really hard on uh, on the uh, on the highlights that come out on every single race that we do that's fantastic he's doing a great job obviously I take uh, the the podcast ideas and I, I do the podcast stuff uh and all the videos that come out on that chucked a couple shorts on last night as well which was nice so i hope you enjoyed them um it's a little bit of fun but yeah obviously the main thing that people know me for is actually not the podcast it is the commentary um unfortunately due to air levels uh, my commentary will be very much reduced i'm usually i'm commentating div 2 and div 1 on a weekly basis uh, i've yet to commentate either this season i did jump into the commerce box for division 4 uh, this weekend in silverstone and I absolutely loved it. I absolutely loved it. It was so nice to be back in the comments box. It's, 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 it's where I feel most at home. You know, I, I almost enjoy commentating more than I do racing at this point, you know, um, that, that I love it so much. It was really, really nice to be back there. Unfortunately, this season, the commentary is going to be very minimal for me, if any. Um, I'm hoping to jump in maybe once or twice at some point this season, but it is uh, kind of unlikely. I've got my A-levels at the end of the season, and my A-levels continue on until like round two of season three, next season, uh, which is going to be interesting. So we're going to have to plan how we're going to make content, plan what my roles are going into next season, uh, but that's obviously more of an admin decision. For now, though, uh, from I mean, my first... Um, my first exam is actually a month yesterday. It's an inner month yesterday, so one day less than a month is my first exam. So wish me luck. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be, what, three weeks? And then, you know, the podcast, it might get a bit sluggish, might get a bit slow. I'll do my the best I can. Obviously, it doesn't really take very long to make these videos just fantastic, which means I can enjoy making them. It's less less hard work off camera, you know what I mean? I get to just enjoy making them and chat until you look. Um, but yes, yeah, so it might be, get a bit tricky. Um, I will do the best I can, do the best I can to be back in the comms box. However, the, for the one race I did commentate, which was Division 4, 107 views already, which is uh, torpedoed up. It's gone very, very quickly. Um, obviously, th th this this YouTube started at the start of the uh, of the league's creation, which was, you know, not even six months ago. It was like, what, it was November? The fact we're getting 100 views on some of these videos is pretty wicked. And actually, speaking of 100 views, we've got over 100 views on Division 2 race this weekend as well. That's unreal. That's unreal. You guys are, are insane. We got 150 on last week in uh, in Division 2 uh, Monza. It looks like Division 2 is a, a real favourite. Um, and nearly 100 on uh, on Division 4 Monza as well. You guys are going crazy. You guys are going crazy with the views. I'm, I'm very, very happy that you guys are enjoying the uh, the the highlights. And I hope you're enjoying the podcast as well. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see uh, what is going to go on continuing. Uh, but yes, thank you very much for everyone uh, enjoying the content and stuff like that. We will continue to pump it all out. We're going crazy this season. Absolutely. Uh, Silverstone, yes. So it is, of course, the first sprint of this sprint season we've got going on. Eight races. We're into round two, and it is Silverstone. Silverstone sprint, first of all, was a little bit of a weird one. It's not always something you see as commonly. Is that a word? Commonly? Uh, but it is, obviously, Silverstone, a very, very good racing um, racing circuit. It's got some really good wheel-to-wheel -wheel, um, places. Of course, it's got the hangar straight going into Stowe, which is a good overtaking point. We see a lot of DRS swapping going into that corner in that section as well, uh, which we'll talk about the, uh, in this podcast as well. But um, yeah, a, a good place to have a sprint. I don't know why they don't, ha I don't have it. It's a really good place to have a sprint. Um, and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Let's go start with Division 4. You'll notice, actually, not just driver winner, driver loser. I'm going to add something to the end. I'm going to add something to the end of it. and We'll, we'll get to there in a second. Uh, yes, first of all, so Division 4, my driver winner... I was very, very conflicted. I was very conflicted about who to give it to. There's two people I want to give it to, uh, which means I'm just going to shout out them both because I do can't sometimes feel bad. People will message me during the week like, oh, this guy was your uh, your driver winner. I had such a good race. It was such a great race. And I didn't get mentioned, that kind of stuff. I do honestly try to mention everyone as notable as I can. Um, 
you know, I, I usually give myself about half an hour for these videos. I can't stack it with, you know, talking about everyone's race. You know, I mean, I don't know, I don't know the ins and outs of everybody's race as well. So uh, I, I'm almost slightly limited. Um, but I, yeah, I talk, to it, talk about everyone as much as I can. For my driver winner in Division 4, my first one I want to talk about is K1 Yo or K1 Breezy, the Alfa Romeo driver. Unreal. And I'll tell you what. He's, it's taken him a week for him to completely go against everyone's expectations and come back with a bang because Monza was not a race to write home about for him. He got, I think, his eight penalty points in one race. When Alfa Romeo are sat P2 in the OCC, fighting potentially for P1, you cannot have a driver that's getting penalty points, harvesting that many penalty points in one race, especially in such a short season where one quality ban, one race ban can be so detrimental. Coming into this race, he did have a quality ban. Very early to have a quality ban. Not great. Started down in uh, in P19. Made it up to P4 in the sprint, on pace. So there was a bit of chaos in the sprint. Uh, and it was a wet sprint as well, which uh, maybe half shows his ability to be very careful with the... Um, uh, with with his inputs in the wet, of course, in the wet you could uh, you're more likely to make mistakes, and other drivers are also more likely to make mis make mistakes. He just benefited off it, it seems. Up to P4 in the sprint is unbelievable from P19, and then continued on to P2 in the race, avoiding those penalties. And what we saw in Division Four a lot was a lot of speeding in the pit lane. Obviously, it is it is a long pit lane in Silverstone, uh, which means it's easy to get the strategy wrong because there's definitely some strategy you don't want to be going for. For example, a two stop uh, in, in normal race space. Uh, but also, it's a very slow pit lane as well. Uh, 37 miles an hour. I don't know what that is in kilometers. It's the slower of the two variations of pit lanes you can get. And we saw a lot of speeding in the pit lane. Boldy and Kalik were two of the most crucial ones. Uh, Kalik dropped from... Uh, well, uh, did, he, was he, did he finish P2? I think Boldy dropped from 1st to 5th. And that was obviously with another, another penalty added on. But Kalik crucially dropped from 2nd to 3rd. And let 5 wise through to win the race. So, uh, you can see how... I mean... Uh, you can expect a five-second penalty, especially with how close the front uh, the front field is in every division this season. A five-second penalty is incredibly crucial. Uh, K1 Breezy benefited off that, stayed off the penalties, did very, very well. Proved everyone wrong from his poor race in Monza. Came back with an absolute bang. Proved that, no, you know what, I'm not going to let this quali ban bring back my team and cost us more points. I'm going to chuck it in there and absolutely smash it. Not only did he overtake Vlad and outscore him in the sprint... Yeah, I've scored him in the main race as well. So very, very well done by him. The other one I want, wanted to mention was Adam Klimak. <sighs> don't talk about him too much. He's a Williams driver in Division 4, if you don't know. Qualified 12th. That's kind of his normal area to qualify. If, if you're a Williams driver, that's where you need to be qualifying. You need to be scoring points. You just need, you don't have to be finishing top 5. You just need to be scoring points. It needs to be uh, an input in Williams. I say that, actually. And Williams are doing very well in the OCC. So, I, so maybe they are bringing their, uh, their expectations up a little bit. But a P12 uh, qualifying uh, for, for the Williams driver... I think they're okay with that. Into the sprint, he had a massive crash with uh, with Rhys Tomo uh, on the exit of Cops. Uh, and that DNF'd Reese, but it kept him going. Uh, Adam Klimak ended up finishing P17 in the sprint, dropping from P12. In the race, torpedoed up to P6 on pace. I was commentating it, and I couldn't believe it. I love seeing the lower teams. If you know me, obviously, I, I, I study the OCC. I study the divisions. You know, I know everything going on in this league. And I love to see a Williams driver or any of the lower... I say, again, I say lower teams. They're doing very, very well right now. But at least a midfield to lower team. Or a team we expected to be lower than they definitely are performing right now. Fighting up at the front or fighting closer to the front. A P6 for Williams. Unreal. Really good batch of points for him. And uh, that, that, that race did not go amiss. That was a really, really solid drive from him. Uh, my driver loser. Yeah. I hate to do it because I really like the guy. It's going to go to Jamie. Um, first of all, very good quality lap. He was like seven thousandths away from pole, which is which is first of all very very good. Uh, started on the front row. The wet didn't treat him well in the sprint. He dropped down to eighteenth. I think he dropped it on the final corner uh, when the safety car restarted. So a bit too happy on the throttle potentially. And then he had I think another two spins after that. So the, so and, and noticeably he was faultless until then. So it seemed like maybe panic, maybe rushing. And you don't want to be rushing in the wet, even if you have made a mistake. He only dropped to, I think, 7th or 8th. You, need to, you can make that up. Be patient with the with the car. You're a very good driver. But, um, yeah, dropped down to 18th in the uh, in the sprint. It, excuse me. In the feature race, got back up to 8th. Decent points, uh, unfortunately, for Jamie. You know what it is? J Jamie is performing okay. He's not performing fantastic. He's performing okay. And there's 100% uh, points in this race where he all points in the remainder of the season where he needs to improve and start finding areas 
to improve. And I wouldn't hold it against him if Haas weren't where they are right now. Haas are probably, I mean, as Alfa Romeo could, but realistically, I think in the in the in the six remaining races of the season, Haas are the OCC's biggest chance of toppling Ferrari. Realistically, they've got a really really good lineup, and I wouldn't be holding it against Kalik if he was driving like this. And he, but uh, but Haas are finishing where we expected them to finish, which is P2, P3, off Ferrari, but still getting potentially in the top three in the OCC, which is a really good improvement for them. Unfortunately for Jamie now. We have to hold him to the standards of what we expect a top team to be doing. Five wires won the race. Kalik finished P3. Uh, Bayes got a very unfortunate race, but I didn't choose him as my driver loser. I thought Jamie would be good uh, for that because Bayes did help his teammate. It was obviously a consideration for Bayes to be as well. But the reason I'm giving it to Jamie is because he also spun in the race on his own. Uh, no, he wasn't on his own. He clipped, I think it was Reese Tomo, and had a half spin, uh, which cost him another position. Uh, I, I think it was the position to Walker as well. No disrespect to Walker, but why is he fighting Walker? He needs to be up at the front. And like I said, I have to hold Jamie to the standards that I would now see a Haas driver, a brand new Haas driver, uh, in this brand new Haas uh, to be driving at, which is a top field driver. He can't be uh, qualifying P2, unreal. He can't be making that many mistakes in the sprint and dropping down to 18th. He came back to 8th, fair play. And some people might say, oh, well, he went from 18th to 8th. That's a good recovery. It is, it, you know, it, it's a very, it's a good recovery. But as a as a Haas driver in this brand new Haas, where they're fighting for P1 in the OCC, that is a minimum. Getting back to eight, getting back to eight from last is a minimum. Is what I expect from Haas at this point. And Jamie 100% has it in him. Jamie 100% has it in him. He qualified second, and it was a, he was he was so small off pole. He was nearly the fastest person in the entire session, and crucially, out qualifying his teammate, which is obviously something that maybe. Uh, maybe it's overlooked, you want to work with your teammate, but if you're out able to out-qualify him, it is starting to feel the idea that you are the first driver. Kalik won in Monza, and uh, Jamie finished down in 8th. He's just finished with another 8th in, in Silverstone. And he, I, I, I do believe he will get podiums. I think he'll probably win a race this season, but we need to start seeing it. Because if Haas genuinely want to have a chance of fighting Ferrari for the OCC, then he's got to bring in his big results, because... Uh, you know, he's driving very, very solidly, making a couple of mistakes. If he was driving an old Haas that got P5 in the OCC, that's what we expect. He, he's, he's a pretty solid driver. He is now one of the weaker links of this brand new Haas, and that's not where you want to be. Especially when your teammate is winning the OCC right now, or leading the, uh, sorry, leading the, the championship right now. Uh, you don't want to be falling too far behind at all. He's currently P9 in the driver standings. Meanwhile, his teammate's P1. So it's it's just not a great look from a statistical point of view and also obviously a logical point of view looking at the races. He has it in him. He 100% has it in him. As we move on to that... Oh, no. Oh, sorry. Team loser. Team loser. Sorry. Uh, te sorry. Team winner. Team loser. Team winner. Alfa Romeo. Unreal. Unreal. First of all, K K1, yo. Huge batch of points. Vlad qualified 8th uh, in the sprint stage where he was in 8th and made up to P4 in the feature race. Big batch of points. Big batch of points. This is what I expect these top teams from to, to be doing. Alfa Romeo, I hold my hands up. I didn't expect too much from them. I think I predicted them fifth in the OCC. They're smashing it. They're absolutely smashing it. And uh, uh, and Breezy and Vlad is a really, really good duo. They worked well last season. They're working well once again. Vlad has been almost faultless this season. He's been doing really, really well. I know we got an incident with Baze, but still, nonetheless, good driving. Dr good driving. He, if you remember, if you watched the predictions video, I was very, very close to putting him in my, in my top three. I backed out and said Dan for, for P3 instead. Vlad is driving very, very well, and it's potential that he will actually get a top three. Uh, in the driver standings, he's currently fourth, and he's just ahead of his teammate. So still, very, very good driving from him. Good batch of points. Uh, team loser's got to go to McLaren. Uh, the reason being... And they did have good teamwork because Nico, who isn't even a signed driver, worked with Boldy to try and hold five wise back. It kind of worked. Actually, why have I put him down as team loser? Because as, as teamwork stands, that was quite good. The problem is it didn't do much. Nico ended up finishing 18th, so no points for the uh, no points for the boys in that in that sense. This is the feature race, mind. Uh, and Boldy ended up. I think he I think he crashed with Jamie. He lo either locked up or went late on the brakes into Vale hit Jamie cost him positions, which gave him, I think, a 10 second, but it might have been a 5. Brought him back to P P5 after winning on track. Uh, it's happened again. He he, he led most laps in uh, in Monza and didn't win the race. Uh, in fact, did he even finish on the podium? He finished... Oh, he finished P2. Okay, and the fastest lap still. Uh, Silverstone, he finished again on, on track. P1, he did very, very well. Led most laps, I think. 
and uh, finish P5. It's just not not enough points to show what he's able to do. You know what I mean? I think it's these silly mistakes coming through from Baldi. He's improved from last season, but he's 100% a, 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 uh, has the ability to win this Drivers' Championship, or at least fight for it. And uh, right now, he's, I'm not I'm not seeing that from him. He's P3 right now. He's completely... Yeah, he's nine points behind. It's completely savable. I say savable. He's still in it. I don't know why it's savable. Uh, but uh, yeah, these silly little mistakes we need to be ironing out because... There, there isn't enough room in an eight race season to be getting race bans, quality bans, penalty points at all because, of course, the penalty point, uh, the penalty points enough to get quality bans have been reduced. So, you, I mean, it's just seven penalty points you need for a quality ban. And I mean, fine, yes, Br Breezy did very well with his quality ban, but it was on a sprint, week sprint weekend at a track that's quite easy in the grand scheme of things to overtake. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to get into a situation where you're getting a quality ban in a track, one of the tracks that's coming up. You know what I mean? Uh, where, where there's no sprint, for example. Uh, to save you, so you know, little mistakes from McLaren, a good, good, good attempt on teamwork, which didn't really amount to much. Okay, right now we're going to move on to the new thing that I want to, want to bring in actually before we finish a division. I Loki, I want to do predictions. Let's just do little predictions. I am tempted to do a prediction, a P one two three for the next race. Next time out, we're going to the Red Bull Ring in Austria. Very, very interesting track, actually, about Austria, because we've seen such incredibly close um, qualifying gaps, uh, not just in Division 4, but across the board. And we're, we're now taking you to the shortest track on the entire calendar. Silverstone, the poles and the qualify, qualifying gaps, even the finishing gaps in Division 1, were done by hundredths of a second. We're now going to a track that's 20 seconds short of lap time. You know what I mean? So it's going to be very, very interesting uh, to see what happens now. Uh, also, another thing about Red Bull Ring, of course, is that it, uh, because of the short lap time and the fact there's three DRSs, the majority of the track are in a DRS train, or at least in a, in a DRS, your rear ring is open for most of the lap. Uh, what that ends up meaning is that even drivers that are slightly off the pace can just keep up because they'll just sit in the DRS and you can't drop them. So we might see a couple muddled up orders. If someone can hook up a quality lap, if someone, if, some, if a midfield driver qualies P3, they're in a huge position because dr even faster drivers behind or crucially faster drivers ahead won't be able to escape because of the DRS. If they're able to manage the drive carefully, not make mistakes, and they just stay there, then that's fine. And obviously, track limits are going to be an interesting one. Obviously, there's track limits uh, at exit turn one. I guess entry is turn one as well, if you're if not careful, you turn in too early. Uh, I think we'll probably see some track limits going through turn five and six. Uh, that's the left and right-hander. Or, oh, sorry, I, I should say the two left-handers uh, in the middle sector. Uh, and certainly turn 9 and 10, the two final corners, that's going to that's gonna be the uh, the real harvesting of track limits. I think we're going to see a lot of three seconds uh, coming through. This, this, this race is, is going to show... You know what it is? This race is a, it is a, is a consistency test for the midfield and, you know, I, I have to say it, more backmark drivers. This is their chance, I think, of all races to really do well. Because if they can hook up a quality lap in a lap that's so short... So if, even if you're a tenth off it, that's probably like eight positions. And you see, at least if I remember in Silverstone, I improved my final lap by three tenths. And I went from, I think, 15th to third. So um, this is a real chance, real chance for midfield and backmark drivers to hook in a quality lap, which is what they need to be able to do. And just sit in DRS and show their consistency, not get done by the dirty air and getting track limit penalties. Keep it consistent, get a good result. Uh, Austria, I'm going to say for P3... I haven't actually planned these before I've really... In hindsight, I probably should have planned the top threes. Um, for P3 in Austria. I'm going to say P3. I'm going to say Bayes. I think he's going to re he's, got, he's going to show his consistency. Come back from, unfortunately, a, another poor result in... A, well, I say another. I mean, Monza was a, was a good comeback drive. But a poor result in, a, in, in Silverstone. And a come back and get a podium. His first podium of the season. Uh, crucially, five wise isn't racing. So he's out of my, uh, he's out of my predictions. Uh, P2, I'm going to say it's going to go to Vlad. I think Vlad enjoys this track. I think uh, I think it's very much uh, suited for him. Obviously, he uses no traction, so he'll have a really good exit out of, crucially, turn excuse me, turn 1, turn 3, turn 4. I think I'll be handy for, uh, for overtakes if you are able to overtake through DRS, uh, if you're stuck in a train. I think Vlad's a very consistent driver. I think this is, uh, this is a good chance for him to score big points. P1, I'm going to say Kalik. I think Kalik, uh, realistically, five wise and Boldy are Kalik's biggest chance of a championship fight right now as I see the, the drivers racing. I'm happy to be proven wrong. But as five wise isn't racing, uh, I am going to give it to Kalik, I think, to win the race. He's been on a consistency uh, push right now. Even with the, uh, with the crash with Boldy, he made it, managed to make it up to the front uh, of, of Silverstone and get a good result. He ended up finishing, I believe, on the podium. Yeah, finished P3, so 
you, you're clearly able to do it. I look forward to be uh, to be proven and then winning the race. Right, on to Division 3. And we have my little neck of the woods. For my driver winner. And I said this last season. I think I gave myself driver winner in Monza last season. And I said, every time I decide to give myself driver winner, I will always mention another driver. To make it fair, you know what I mean? Like, you could have had a really good drive, hoping, oh, is Avi going to mention me? And then he talks about himself. So I'm always going to mention another driver. I am going to mention V, though. I'm going to give myself driver winner. Um, that is probably one of my most consistent drives. I was... I think I think I was faultless, and I, I, it's not even I, I can't say that often because I do make stupid mistakes. You know what I mean? You, you have a little, even like a little wobble, you know, a little snap of oversteer. You remember it. You know, you remember it for like 24 hours after. Like if I hadn't done that, where could have I finished? I think I was pretty faultless. A really good lap at the uh, at the end. I, I think it was in the conditions. There was definitely something going on with the track. I, I was struggling for a little bit of grip in qualifying. I had a big snap on the exit of Maggots Beckett's club. No, no, Chapel, Chapel. Um, a bit of a snap on Chapel on my first lap, which put me down in P12, I think. Uh, my second lap, I got up to P3. Good qualifying. That's all I need. I'm not great at qualifying, as people know. The sprint held my position. I think I was solid. Um, the soft runners really caused an issue. Fetch and Nick were running really low wings and soft, so even when they died, it was difficult to overtake because I was running quite high wings preparing for the wet. Uh, of course, the rain started. It, it, the, the feature race started with rain, so I was running slightly higher wings. Well, I say slightly, but actually quite a lot higher wings. So it was difficult for me to get past at that point, so I stayed in P3, uh, which is fine. I guess I was in a position to you know, get good points and move on to the feature race. Feature race I ended up winning. I think I was very, very consistent. Uh, my plan with the higher wings was just... I, I knew I could tell failing and fetch or running higher wings, or at least significantly higher wings than I was. Sorry, lower wings, I should say. Lower wings, they had higher top speed. I was just going to overwork their tyres, make them... You know, make them think I'm gonna go for moves. You know, have a little, have a little look down the inside. Of course, I started P3, like I said. So, um, to, to cause them to work those tires, and you know, make them make mistakes as well. Uh, Fetch, it's been very good this season, to be fair. But last season, he was prone to a couple of mistakes uh, and failing. I was waiting for failing to crack. I'll be honest. If failing is a very, very good driver, he's performed incredibly well this season. I was waiting for him to crack. I know there's always a mistake in someone, even the most consistent drivers. And I was looking for that. I was looking for that crack, and it happened. Uh, they, they ended up colliding together. Uh, that spun failing out of contention and I caught Fetch with DRS. So that was up into P1. The plan just changed. Stay consistent. Uh, the wet, this is the first time I've ever been r relatively quick in wet, which was good. So the high wings really did come in handy for that. Uh, and um, yeah, I managed to win the race. I mean, I did win it on pens. I was staying consistent with skiers. Obviously, skiers, fair play. Very good dive into the final few corners. I can see it happening and I still gave you space. Um, but yeah, very, very good dive. Uh, I knew we were going to get a pen, so I was pretty confident anyway. Uh, you know, so I didn't, I didn't care too much, but I did want to win on track. Naturally, you want to win on track. Um, but yeah, it was a little bit frustrating at the time. Like, wow, he's really pulled that off her play. Uh, so yes, I applaud you for that move, but uh, still, haha, I won. So get got. Uh, my driver winner, <laughs> if it's not me, is actually going to go to Morgan Hughes. My boy, Kua. Uh, P5 and quality, really good start to the season, or at least the start of his XRS career. And the sprint, he dropped down to P10 after getting into complications with, uh, with with the incredible midfield that I saw. It was a very, very close racing. A lot of ball banging going on that midfield, uh, which was interesting to see. But I'm back up to P5 in the race. Uh, very consistent driver. That's another big batch of points for Alfa Romeo with Fetch and P2 as well. Uh, speaking of Fetch, I'm giving him a shout out. I'm not going to give him driver winner. Oh, excuse me. I'm burping a lot. Woo. I'm not going to give uh, Fetch my driver winner, but I am going to give him a shout out. <sighs> like... I don't think anyone in the history of the earth, maybe Fetch, thought that Mr. Fetch would be a genuine title fight. He qualified P2. We know he's good at Silverstone. We expected that. But we saw a lot of last season. He'd start at a good quality pace and make mistakes in the race. We saw that for at least the last six rounds of last season. Uh, stayed in P2 in the sprint. And then the race finished P2 because he was careful on the pens. It looked like it was going to be P3, but Skiz got uh, pens. Fair play. Fetch is cooking. And I'm gonna give him, uh, I'm gonna give him uh, some props, but I'm not gonna give him driver winner. I do think that Morgan, Morgan Hughes has cooked, uh, and also I have cooked also. So, uh, but fair play, you deserve your shout out. Driver loses skiz. Uh, on track, he looked like he'd won. The chat when I came back to, uh, go back to, to Discord, thought he'd won. He not only didn't win the race with the penalties, he didn't come second. He didn't even get the podium. He didn't actually finish in the top five, but he finished P9. How has that happened? Uh, <laughs> Katie didn't race, and it was evident what me and Raven talked about in the predictions podcast. 
uh, the, the two Ferraris and the two McLarens be the big four, the big four dominant boys. They'll be cooking at the front. You should be trying to beat them. They're the ones to beat. And it, Monza was all over the place, first of all, because I was in the bin. I think Skiers finished in the bin as well uh, and failing one. <laughs> uh, this, this one was a bit more to toe. I mean, Skiers was at the front, but his qualifying wasn't great. He qualified ninth, which is okay, but he's generally quite good in qualifying. So I, I don't know. Uh, in the sprint, he dropped back to 14th. And then in the race, he was looking like he was going to win with a good strategy because he got the strategy right, which is why he poked his nose into P2. And I can't lie, this guy just spawns in my in my wing mirrors. Like, I'll, it was under safety car. It could, I didn't I didn't know who's going to be behind me. I assumed it would be fetch. It was just skiz. Like, where has this man come from? Like, I eight times last season, I was just feel like, why is he here? Who, who is he? But yeah, skiz appearing out of nowhere, as he always does. Uh, battled me into the line uh, and uh, finished ninth. Like, who expected that? So, uh, yeah, dr uh, driver loser for sure, Skiz. Uh, team winner, me and Malachi, 58 points, secured in the bag. We actually nearly scored all of Hass's points in one in one race. So, good. We've already taken in the, uh, the Constructors' Championship. I think we've got, like, a 20-point gap now. This is, the, this is the Avi and Malachi that I think people expected to be seeing. The Drivers' Champion and the 100 mil boy from Division 2. Uh, yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting. We've got a really good team up by me and him. Uh, we got the strategy bam on with Raven as well working with us. It was difficult. It's obviously very difficult when you have two drivers close to each other, especially when they're two, two drivers close to each other at the front, because you know, if you have a double stack or the strategies have to change to work with the other driver, it gets difficult because you don't want to be, like you don't want to be helping them, but you also don't want to be ru ruining your own race. You, if, you, if you're running one and two, you don't want to be ruining that. You know what I mean? Me and Malachi have run one and two in both races now, and this one was on genuine pace, not just pit stops. So that was good. Uh, but yeah, uh, we, we worked our way around the double stack and it ended up working perfectly. One and three for us, so nice. Uh, team loser, I've got two written down. I've got Alfa Romeo, not Alfa Romeo, I've got Alfa Tauri, sorry, and I've also got Haas. I'll talk about Alfa, Alfa Tauri first. Pink and Matt. Appeared in P4 and P5 on my screen in the wet conditions. Fair play. Pink, less fair play because he's on full traction, so meh. But Matt, fair play. He's had a difficult start to the season. It was, I was... I was glad, as as, it, as as my boy, I was glad to see him in top five. Did he do anything with it? No. <laughs> he got, I, I don't even know what, I don't even want to know what happened in that midfield. That midfield, the clips I've seen, were chaotic. I am glad I was sat with my crown at the front, because I did not want to be any part of that. Uh, unfortunately, by Avatari, uh, who were in the bag to kill some big points. Matt and Pink both getting pretty poor qualifying in 12th and 13th. Uh, I, I, say, I say poor, but I mean, you know, from the, the caliber of those two drivers, they can do better. Uh, in the sprint up to 6th and 7th, that was more like what we expected to see. A really, really good comeback from the both of them. And then in the race, 8th and 11th. And I mean, I think they both expected to be in a better position disregarding. You know what I mean? The instance they got into was a very unfortunate. Uh, the other one I've got written down is Haas. Failing squash DNF after winning the sprint and the feature. What? Hey, or no. Getting pole and winning the sprint, not winning the feature. Um, he, he's been on an absolute roll this season. He's been, oh, excuse me, he's been absolutely flying. He's clearly going to be a title fighter. This is a this is a form that I don't think anyone expected from him. So really, really exciting. DNFing in the race after getting into a couple of incidents. I think he ended up getting a pen as well. And it's only a three second one penalty point. But like I said previously, one penalty point is going to be meaning a lot at the end of the end of the day. Especially when people like me and Malachi aren't really making mistakes. Fetch isn't really making mistakes at all. So it's going to be if he if he intends to continue in this title fight, which I'm absolutely assuming he does. I, 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 what it's going to teach him is consistency it's not just about winning races it's about winning races again and again and again and again or at least getting top results again and again and again if you remember me last season when i won the title i didn't get that in fact matt's got more podiums than me you know what i mean but i just, I just but he also had more downs than me like i'd finished outside the top 10 once and that was that, that was when that, that was kota when i got disqualified for no reason uh if, by the game disregarding that i never finished out the top 10 I just did the same thing again and again, laps and laps. And that's a skill that when failing learns, he's going to be an absolute force to be reckoned with. Uh, but might be, like I said, beginning to see the cracks, potentially. Cracks that as his title rival, unfortunately for him, I'm going to try and exploit. I'm going to try and ruin, and I'm going to try and force him to make errors. But he was able to keep his head and uh, show the form he's been showing so far this season. Absolutely, he can, he can fight and potentially win the title. Uh, as for CGM, uh, just an alright drive actually I don't have anything against CGM I actually don't know why I've written Haas down because he's actually had a decent drive he qualified in a decent spot in P6 got the sprint P5 and finished the race in P6 I actually don't know why I've got Haas written down maybe because I just wanted to talk about failing maybe I just wanted to talk about failing maybe that's why 
uh, oh, my predictions, right. In Austria, I don't want to sound big-headed, but I'm going for it. I know, look, look. I never sound big-headed. You lot, you lot know I, 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 I'm mean to myself on these podcasts. Last season, I was mean to myself in the podcast. I used to say, um, I'm rubbish. I used to give myself driver, loser, left, right, center. I was rubbish. I kept making mistakes. I was useless. No. First time, the first time in this podcast history, I'm going to big myself up. I've talked about my Silverstone race. I said I was flawless, and we're trying to do it again. I'm going to say I'm going to win Austria. I should start off P3, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spoil it and say I'm going to win. I think I'm going to get P1 in Austria. It's one of my favorite tracks. The track that really works for me. My quality pace isn't amazing. My consistency in this track is very, very good, just like Silverstone. I lost the win last season due to a three-second penalty uh, and a mistake I made into turn three, uh, which caused me to have to dodge because I, I was late on the brakes, getting myself the three-second penalty. I also got a collision with MCL in that corner as well. If I could not be stupid into turn three... I should be fine. I should be good to go. Uh, my P2, I'm going to give to Skiz. Skiz is a quick driver. Skiz is, Skiz, is, uh, I, I, Skiz is faster than me. I'll be honest, Skiz is faster than me. Uh, but uh, I hope he doesn't make any more mistakes. He, he won the race last season. He said it's not a track that's particularly good for him. Uh, but he won it because not getting a penalty. That shows his consistency. That shows how good he is on a track that he's maybe not comfortable with. I think Skiz will get P2. I think Skiz is a very, very good driver. I'm excited to be battling with him again, hopefully. P3... I know people have leaded their seats. Matt, I see you. Matt, I see you leading in. I know you're smiling to yourself right now. Uh, P3, I'm not going to say Matt. <laughs> I'm going to say Liam. I think Liam is going to get a P3. I don't think people realise how how good he was in Silverstone. Really, really good. And unfortunately, with the uh, with the 5 second penalty speeding in the pit lane, he would have actually got a really solid result had he not spent in the pit lane. His pace was pretty solid. He was lapping uh, pretty nicely, I've been told. According to, according to his engineer, he was matching mine lap times and even going faster. Uh, which is a very good position to be, a very confident position to, for him to be. Finished P4 in Silverstone. Fair play. Fair play. And I mean, he traded that actually with Melvin. He got a P4 uh, in Monza as well. Uh, his qualifying was not great, P15. And that's not, what you, that's not actually what you want to see. What was his qualifying in Monza? Qualifying in Monza was P16. If he's able to hook up a quality lap, then I believe he's going to get P3 in, uh, in Austria. I, I, I have faith in him. I have faith in my boy. Right, moving on to Division 2, and this race was a little chaotic, I won't lie. Uh, so, of course, you know, it, it, it's the usual, it's kind of difficult in terms of stewarding and and uh, and doing the results and stuff because it's a sprint weekend. So, obviously, all the all the penalties that come through in the sprint, obviously, translate in the race. Uh, there was, a, I think, was there rain in that race? There wasn't rain in that race, actually, but it was chaotic nonetheless because there was a weird... There was a weird ass glitch that went going on in a, in the race during a safety car. There was a couple of disconnects and then suddenly the host disconnected. So we knew there was a problem going on. Uh, there was a little bit decent going on. And then suddenly the safety car went in and there was just a massive gap. There was like a 17 second gap between P2 and 3. According to the drivers, it looked fine. But from the spectator menu, it looked weird. And obviously we can only see from the spectator menu. We decided to red flag it. I think that was the right decision. I think that it's unfortunate, obviously, because that then neutralizes the tires and everything, the, the, what the drivers have planned to do. One of the most controversial drivers was Somatic Coast, who had stayed out on the safety car on those mediums. And obviously they got changed to softs. I got to the red flag restart. I agree it's not fair. I agree it's not fair. However, it is how... It, well, first of all, it's how a red flag works. So, you know, it's just unfortunate that's how, that's how it's going to be. Um... But absolutely, secondly, uh, I think the right call was to the red flag. We didn't know what was going on. And then later, after the race, we saw that Dylan, or Megan, fell through the map, was underneath the, re- the track, glitched through the floor, uh, and actually out of a row, showed, showed a lot of other clips of drivers uh, de-sticking about. Obviously, the stream was all over the place as well. Uh, and then we ended up seeing Jonas's screen. I think there was an incident between Jonas and Kino, where they crashed but didn't crash, and they kind of ghosted through each other. But on Kido's screen, it was forced off track. There was some weird decent going on. Uh, the red flag obviously solved that, but it did lead us to three laps of racing, which everyone has equal tyres. Smatic Coast ended up winning, uh, and his penalty got removed as well for moving under braking. That was an interesting one for me, actually. I want to talk about that. Because moving under braking was an interesting one for me, because obviously if you're moving while braking, it's different, like, but the explanation was always moved before the braking zone, and the moving has just continued during the braking zone. I'm not a huge fan of that because he was technically moving under braking, but the way I see it, it is, is is less so whether he was moving before the braking zone or whatever. The way I saw it was that, there, that he didn't affect anyone by moving in that way. You know what I mean? And uh, that's the way I've always seen it. And the fact that the, he allegedly got penalised five seconds 
uh, because the Mercedes hit him, or he caused an incident. He didn't cause an incident. Did you watch? Watched... I think people were focusing on the Alfa Romeo more than they should be focusing on the Mercedes. Where on earth was the Mercedes planning on going? You know what I mean? I think we're, we're looking into the moving under braking too much and not looking at what the Mercedes was doing. Why is he trying to go? I, I know something like why he's trying to go for that. What is he going for? I had no idea where he was off to. There wasn't a gap even prior to the moving where there was a space for a car. You know what I mean? Especially into the braking zone. Once they got into the, into the braking zone, that was not a space for a car to be there. And also, secondly, why would you want to be round the outside of the entry of Veil? Vale? Because then you have a, a massive curve on your inside, a car on your outside, and an incredibly tight angle. If that had actually been pulled off and Flair had got his nose in there, I can't lie, he would have lost a position before he gained a position on Somatic. No way was he getting that position there. So, I I agree. Moving on to braking, not great. Uh, he did move in the breaking zone. He was also moving before the breaking zone, so I think that's absolutely fine. Uh, the difference is, for me, he didn't affect Flair's drive, which is he was originally penalised for. Because where on earth was Flair sticking his nose into? Where on earth was he going? Uh, unfortunately, though, I do agree Somatic Coast got a very lucky win. I, I absolutely agree that. that it, I think it would have been Epic who won the race. Epic was on some, some crazy pace. But I've given my driver winner to Somatic Coast because he has managed to sneak his nose into a victory by just staying out, staying out under the pits. And you know what it means? I would feel more sympathy for the drivers who it ruined uh, if Lando Norris, who I support in real life, didn't pit for every single safety car when a red flag comes out. And he come, and he, instead of being P4, he's P9. So I'd feel more sympathy, but I feel this pain every single week there's a safety car and then a red flag because I have to deal with it every time because Lando always pits. So screw it. Somebody coast, driver winner. <laughs> Fair play on the win, to be honest. Because it's not like he had a bad drive. He had a very good drive. Um, and the strategies worked in his favour. And that happens sometimes. Uh, my driver loser is going to go to Casper. Uh, got into a couple of incidents. Got rear-ended, I think, twice. Uh, not a great start for, the, for a championship leader, for sure. Uh, Division 2 and 1 results haven't been done yet. Not surprised. It was chaos. It was crazy. I mean, Division 1 hasn't been done because Division 2 hasn't been done yet. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Division 2 is going to take a while. Because if you think about it, we've got to add on all the three seconds from pr from prior to the red flag. And then all the... Somehow people are getting three seconds in a three-lapper, for God's sake. But it, obviously they don't come through as three seconds. They come through as two seconds. So we've got to add another second onto their last, into their race time. Which is a pain in, the, uh, pain in the bum as well. So apologies for the Division 2 uh, results not being out. We're doing our best. Casper, uh, uh, not a great start, start to the season. That's absolute. And especially since he has such a strong start to the last season as well. Uh, I've got no team winner and team loser. I didn't really see any big moments of teamwork in that race, at least not to my watching. Uh, but also because what we have in Division 2 is incredible, where we have an actually a very, very split field. What I said going into the new season was, you know what it is? As we go into more and more seasons in XRS, we're going to begin to see... The, the 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 good drivers that stand out in the in the bottom teams to come up and get signed by a big team and vice versa the drivers that are struggling in top teams will just get uh, get dropped and signed for the bottom teams we saw that in a couple of times last season we saw it with Boom Boy from Aston to uh, to Towery Rosman from Williams to Towery Coy from Alpine to McLaren it's, those are three examples in this division uh, that we saw uh, Corb from where did Corb start Williams to McLaren oh excuse me we saw those kind of moves. But what we've got now, obviously, as the I completely disregarded the fact that the league would grow and fast drivers would fast drivers who joined would then go into those lower teams. We've got some really interesting drivers in lower teams. We've got Jonas uh, in, in Red Bull. We've got Core back in Aston Martin. Uh, we've got Mal's and I mean Conehead or, or Face Dom's doing very well in Alpine. We've crucially got Millard back in Williams, who's doing very very well. We've got Moz Megan in a Mercedes. Uh, we've got so many names that are in more midfield to lower teams that are performing very well. We've got the same situation we had last season, which is exciting, which is very exciting in my eyes because, like I said in the, in the predictions back uh, when we did the predictions before season, we've got big names in every single team. It's impossible to choose someone for P10 when they're all driving so well. They've got some really good solid names in the uh, in the team across the board. So um, I'm going to say no to team loser, no to team loser. I uh, Sorry, wait, well, no to team winner or loser, sorry. Uh, I think we've got an incredible split, and I'm very happy with that. So this is the, this is the happiest I've been about not having a team loser and team winner. Right, for my little top three predictions. Um, P3, I'm going to say that Boom Boy is going to get P3. 
We know he's good at this track. He's proven he's good at this track. It's a track that's very, very suited to him. Being patient sitting in trains. We've seen that in uh, in Monza. He has the ability to be able to follow through Dirty Air, which is crucial through Ascari. It'll be exactly the same through turns five and six. Um, track limits, he's been very strong at that. He's been staying off track limits. has allowed him to get good, good result in Monza um, by just staying off the penalties. He's been pretty much faultless, actually, this season. He got in, into an incident in Silverstone, which is unfortunate. But none, nonetheless, I think it's a track that really suits him. So I'm going to say Boom Boy P3. P2, I'm going to say Ronan. Uh, very unlucky so far this season. Uh, he's got quite into incidents. I think that Ferrari need to have a big break. Casper uh, and Ronan are still, in my eyes, the strongest pairing in this division. Um, I can't see why we wouldn't finally have a Ferrari securing a podium, or at least a win, you know what I mean? Because uh, they, they're, they're two incredibly accomplished drivers. Casper's a champion. Ronan got P2 last season. We're going to see them for the front. I think Ronan's going to get P2. P1? It's not Casper. It's not Corb, who I actually considered as well, because Corb did very well last season. But then I remember he also spun turn one, so I thought, you know what, I'll let him do his thing. Uh, I'm going to say Millard. Millard has come through, and very similar to Failing Squash, has proven everyone wrong. Millard, who was Division 3 last season, yeah, fair enough, he was doing very well in Division 3, leaving the championship, fine with me. But then came through to Division 2, and went nuts. His, he, he did incredible in Monza and nearly won it. We got unfortunate with the penalty. And remember, that race was the one where everyone finished like within a second of each other, like the whole fucking grid. So it ended up being P5 when he won on track. Uh, and then he rocked up to uh, to Silverstone and broke into the 24s. What? Huh? Like, who who permitted you to, be, to do that, realistically? Millard is turned in to Williams jackpot, pretty much. He is coming through being probably i mean first of all they're most the most accomplished driver in this league 100 percent. but second of all they're fourth of a potential win or a potential podium or potential big points week and week in week out he's pretty faultless i think he'll get his win in austria it's a good track for him uh and i think that his consistency will be shown here uh, like i said previously his consistency will be shown in this race He's able to he's, if he's able to hook it up, I think he will. And he's proven he's got good quality pace, which, like I said, I think I think a quality position is overlooked in Austria because everyone's like, oh, but there's three DRSs, so it's easy to overtake. Is it is it easy to overtake? Yeah, if you're at the front of a train. What happens if you're in the middle of a train? Is it easy to overtake anymore? Uh, so yeah, I think Miller's good quality pace will come in handy there as well. I think Miller's gonna win. Finally, up to Division One. This is one of the longest podcasts I've done. Goodness me, we're still sat here. Uh, Division One, my driver winner has to go to the Ferrari boy. My first Ferrari division winner, other than me. Oh, I've got about me. Sorry. Second Ferrari division. <laughs> Second Ferrari driver winner. Uh, Tano. Unreal. Unreal. Where did this pace come from? Uh, very, very solid drive. He actually showed that he actually drew out the work consistency in this drive. He was unreal. And you know what it is? In the front of the field in Division 1, it is so close. We had the two Hasses. We had Tashubi. We had the big boy Reese. We had uh, Tano as well. We had such a close field up at the front there. And uh, uh, we had Powell, sorry, the Aston Martin boys. Why am I f I'm forgetting that? We had Alec for some reason. Alec was there for some reason. Uh, we had an incredible close field up at the front of Division 1. He was the most consistent for sure. Um, avoided the penalties. Bargained with Tonio, which is... Uh, uh, Tonio? I'm forgetting Tonio. Of course Tonio was up there as well. Uh, speaking of Tonio, uh, driver loser. Uh, once again... Probably the I can't like probably the fastest probably the fastest on race pace. I think he was probably the same fastest in Monza as well. Just gets into situations, man. Just gets into situations, and he's it, I, you know what? It, it, I'm excited that he's going for this title. I'm excited that he's driven to go for this title because he's such a big name in this esports kind of scene, and the fact he's really pushing for it is exciting. Uh, getting caught with an incident in Tano with Tano into turn three, uh, spinning him down to last. He then cut through the field like a knife through butter. It was unreal. And then when it obviously got the strategy wrong or something went wrong where he ended up being on hards, everyone went on to softs. He just did God's work in defending. I can't lie, Tony affected this order more than anyone in any race ever because you, you had the situation where the, the front boys that went on to the, uh, the, the the hard tires from the mediums, oh sorry, from the mediums from the hards. Uh, so Tanner was in that pack and Reese was in that pack and I think Alec was as well. You had those three. Then you had the rest of the boys. It was the both Hasses. It was uh, the Aston Martins. It was well, Neb wasn't, sorry, but Powell was. Neb was in the front group. And they were chasing in because obviously they got undercut big, big time because they stayed on the tyres for the longest stint for the first one. 
but they won the fastest tie for the second time. And Tony O'Reilly put in God's work defending, holding them up for so long. I don't even know how. And uh, and probably stopped the uh, the soft runners from winning the race. I can't. I think Power was going to win the race because I mean they crossed the line together. If you ever watched the highlights video, I suggest you watch that highlights video because P one two three finished within a tenth of each other. And I don't think people realise. I think it would have been P one two three four, but Alec had a three seconds that so dropped him back a bit. So it didn't look like it. It looked like it was only three. Drivers went across the uh, finished uh, across the finish line. Sorry, words. They crossed the finish line as if it was lap one. I think they were probably closer bound in the final lap, lap 26, than they were on lap 2. That was ridiculous how close they were. And uh, I think it was very much affected by the fact that Tony defended. So, driver loser. Because he should not be defending, he should be attacking. Because he smashed at that race, and it got very unfortunate that he got spun. Uh, team winner again. No one stood out for me. We've got a, excuse me, we've got a really, really good uh, split. I, actually, I was considering Alfa Romeo, because Tony did hold ha the Haas up for Ziagli. So you know what, you know, go on. I say Ziagli, sorry, it's Zilagi. I had it right the first time and Raven ruined it for me. It's Raven's fault. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll go on, I'll give it to Alfa Romeo. Tony's good defending for uh, Zilagi was uh, was handy, I'm sure, for uh, his position, so fair enough. Uh, team loser Haas. Uh, you know what, it, I, I don't know, why have I written down Haas again? I did it for Division 3 as well. They had a really good drive. Their reserve ended up crashing out in a really unavoidable, really unavoidable, really avoidable incident with Neb. Uh, but besides that, it was pretty good. It, it's a good first re result for them, uh, for Supply Raptor, to be scoring big points, especially for Haas, to be picking spot on the right reserve. Uh, but, yeah. <sighs> uh, no team loser, then. Gonna give no one the team loser. Good race from everyone. Finally, for, to conclude this podcast, and we can chill, because I was going to talk about OCC, but the results aren't done, so I can't. Uh, the top three for Austria for Division 1. I'm going to say P3. I'm going to say Reese. Good for his consistency. He's a very consistent driver. We need to see uh, he was a little bit off the pace. I say a little bit off the pace. He was rapid. But in comparison to the people he was racing, it looked like he was a little bit off the pace in Silverstone. Looking forward to a big result in, uh, in, in, in Austria. We know he can do it. He's a champion for a reason. I'm going to say Reese P3. Uh, I'm going to say P2 Pau. Pau's been driving very well. Uh, and I think Aston Martin for another podium will be, will be very handy for that. Drove very well in, um, in Silverstone. Staying away from incidents and seek his way up to a podium. I think he'll do it again. P1, I'm going to say Teshubi. I think that Teshubi, I mean, I think he, he was one of my favourites to win the title. I think he, I think I did predict him P1, but I've forgotten now. Uh, he hasn't had the easiest start of the season. I thought he would be a bit quicker. I thought he would be a bit more dominant. He has a way of dominating races and just sitting at the front and being that, that kind of powerhouse people struggle to beat. We haven't seen that so far this season. I think Australia, we will see it. I think Australia will be the first race where he is starting at the front, leading the trains. Uh, strategically sitting behind people just to pass and have the power because I mean if anything P2 in a train when you're faster than the guy ahead you'll have you have the most power because you have the DRS and then you have the ability to just kind of d dictate if people get past so uh, I think Tesh will be able to take that role I think he'll be leading the front pack I think he'll win the race thank you very much everyone for joining me in this podcast uh, I will let you guys go to sleep now because whatever time you're watching this it's too late this podcast was long so whatever whatever you were doing 50 minutes ago you're now not doing and you're listening to me so go away and do the thing you were doing 50 minutes ago for goodness sake uh thank you very much for joining uh once again another insane race uh another insane round uh, of xrs x racing series cannot wait austria is coming up next the first time we're getting a little bit newer we went from the 50s and we're going up to the 70s i think austria first race 70s someone in the comments tell me Speaking of comments, actually, go on, drop some comments. Let me know who do you think is going to finish top three in the races coming up. I cannot wait to read your comments and have a look at what you think. Um, of course, if you're not already in the league, come join us, XRS. If you want to have a go at a championship, you have me to beat if you want to come to Division 3. Uh, and you also have some incredible other drivers who are fighting very hard for their championships as well. I cannot wait to see you. And I will see you all very, very soon. <laughs>